ko pihi mana toku mahi. Uh, so I'm a, a detective or police officer here in, in Northland. I work out of Whangarei. Uh, and uh, we run a few uh, kids programs uh, with the police uh, who get involved with kids that are in a bit of strife. We work with other agencies uh, to help these kids get on track. One of my colleagues actually looks after them here in, in Waitangi. Her name's Gail Shepherd, and she does some good work with these kids. Uh, brings them from Otangare Trust in Whangarei. Brings up a whole group of them, boys and girls, who. Um, been kind of led astray and uh, just need to get back onto the right tracks. And by coming here, some of them, they haven't known really much in their life. They, they've only known the struggle um, that their family is. They don't know anything better or anything more than that. And we bring them here with the hope of helping them uh, so that they can have a, a sense of belonging and uh, somewhere to, to go and uh, reconnect with their culture uh, to help them, to give them the tools uh, to move forward in life knowing that what they have is not where it stops uh, so that they can use the tools that they have, they learn here such as discipline and uh, manaakitanga, whanaungatanga so manaakitanga is hospitality, caring just looking after each other uh, whanaungatanga is a sense of family, although we might be of different blood or different hapu iwi. When you come here to uh, our waka kaupapa, we all whanau. We come together as one, and that's how it should be. Uh, there shouldn't really be division. Uh, it doesn't matter what creed or what background you come from. So I come from the police. Some people come from gangs. Uh, yeah, people living the struggle, they come out of nowhere. But once we all come together, it's whanaungatanga, manaakitanga, uh, coming together as one, as a whānau, ko tahitanga. To give them those tools, to teach them those tools, hopefully they can take that away and use those tools, rely on those tools to make themselves better and to strive for something better than what they have. I was just talking about the uh, parts of the waka here. So at the front here we have uh, what we call the toihu. As you look down the hull, there's three sections to a waka. So the front section is called te ihu. The middle section is called a wainga. And the back section is called te kei. So the hull, for instance, on Ngātuki Matafaurua, it is uh, made up of three logs. Because if it was in one piece, uh, the log would snap and break. So they've uh, broken it down into three, three parts uh, with a dove. Uh, shape cut in the join uh, for strength and what they do is the front part of the hull which they call the homey is actually lifted a little bit so that uh, it doesn't dive into the waves as it crashes over these side panels of the waka they're called the rawawa these uh, black strips down the side they're called the pawai the pawai and the rawawa are connected by lashings. Uh, the pawai connects the rawawa, the homi or the hull, together. So it holds it together uh, and is quite a strong part of the waka. These strips that go along the top that hold the waka apart, uh, they're called the taumanu. The carving on the back, the very back, is called a taurapa. When these wakas are dressed up on special occasions, as you can see in the waka here, they've got these black sticks with white feathery uh, round circles on it. Those are called the karu, or karu atua, they're the eyes of God. And they stick out the front here. We're basically giving our waka glasses so that it can see where it's going. And along with those uh, karu, there's like a tail that comes off the top of the taurapa uh, and reaches down into the water. That's what we call a fiore. So the main purpose of the fiore is to release bad vibes or the bad wairua. Instead of it going through the men and collecting in the men, it goes out the back through the fiore and is released into the ocean. It's almost like uh, holding a 
a, uh, an electric fence and grabbing your mate at the same time. So you won't feel it, but your mate does. So it all goes into the ocean. The men, actually, on the waka, they're called kaihoi. The paddles are called hoi. So this is a hoi. This part here is the upoko, the tinana, rata or arero. So arero, but the rata on this side and the fata on this side. The hoi is used by our kai hoi, so that's their mahi, that's why kai becomes, uh, comes before hoi, the, they're the kai hoi. The person in the middle, he's a hotu or kai hotu, he is, his job is to be the leader, the guy that stands up in the middle and uh, does all the directions. And at the very back there is a steerer, a kai uringi, he steers uh, the waka and makes sure you don't crash into the rocks or, or get stuck. But he has a special hoi as well, it's, it's a bit bigger. That's called uh, an uringi, the, the steering hoi. Whole idea of, of mana moana. What does that mean to us as, as Māori? Well, I, I suppose it's got lots of layers, but I think in its topmost layer, I guess it's just that whole idea of reclaiming our kōrero, reclaiming our mahi, and being able to share that reclamation with everybody else in Aotearoa. So it's not actually something that's only done by or talked about by a small section of. of our community but by everybody but I think on a bigger scale by seeing wakas like these that have sailed thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of miles across the ocean that have sailed to places that have been until very recently just a part of our kōrero but not uh, as such not a part of a reality for a lot of our, our people so then what happens is you're able to start recreating the old stories, reactivating Kaumatua who remember old stories, getting all that kōrero out about all the different uh, moana and waka kaupapa that's still survived till this time. And then, you know, putting them in song, putting them, you know, putting them in waiata, haka, poi, all those kind of things because we're not just singing about something people thought might have happened but we're talking about stuff that that actually happened well i think it's appropriate in that it builds on what we've seen over the last few days just shows people that the waka isn't just a whisper so it didn't just come in for one day and then disappear but it's a voice and it's a voice that's traveled thousands of miles over many ocean waves to get here as our Samoan whanau have shown and so when that voice becomes more than a whisper, then it takes hold. And if we combine that whisper with the roar of Kapahaka, that will certainly be a great thing. <laughs> Kura 
Oh, 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 oh,